Okay, in this video, I'd like to show you a proof of how to set up the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is write out the Schrodinger equation. So the Schrodinger equation says the following. It says that we have negative h-bar squared over 2m times del 2 psi of x of t del x squared plus v of x times psi of x of t is equal to i times h-bar times del psi of x of t del t. Alright, now I did a proof of this already, of, oh, excuse me, of the Schrodinger equation. So if there's anything I'm saying which doesn't make full sense, then look at that first. Then ask me a question, of course. Very quickly to explain it, we have Planck's constant over 2 pi. We have a wave equation, which is psi, okay, that's the Greek letter psi, capital psi. And of course, the difference between capital psi and small psi, that's capital psi, that's small psi. In quantum physics, we say small psi is just the spatial coordinates, or the spatial component, and capital psi is both the spatial and temporal. Okay, so we have both x and t, and we would just have x. Obviously, if we want to generalize it to three dimensions, we're talking x, y, z, t. Alright, so we have the second derivative with respect to x times a potential energy term. So obviously, if you're, for example, working in a potential difference, then you would have an electrostatic potential here. And we have the complex number times h-bar times the first derivative with respect to t. So the next thing I'm going to do is assume separation of variables. Now, you might say, well, why can you assume separation of variables? The answer is that it's just a trick. It's something that people try, and it's found to work. All right, so there's no particular reason why it works. Oftentimes, people try separation of variables, and it doesn't work. What that means is that we have a function of two variables, in this case, x and t. And separation of variables assumes that the function which you have of two variables can be broken up into two functions, each of only one variable. So we can say that it's small psi of x, and we can say, we'll say it's capital phi of t. Two separate functions. Now this doesn't always work, but for the Schrodinger equation it seems to work. And these are obviously two functions, each of only one variable. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, get the derivatives of this. So if we get the derivative with respect to x, the second derivative with respect to x, excuse me, we're going to find that it's just the second derivative with respect to um, phi, small phi, excuse me, and we're going to have a small psi and then phi, okay? Then we're going to have the first derivative with respect to x is going to be equal to small phi prime times, uh, small psi prime times phi, I'll try not to say that anymore, and the first derivative with respect to time is equal to psi phi prime. All right, so that's just a product rule, basically. Okay, I, I won't go into detail there. Like I said, uv and just differentiate it out, and you'll find that that's exactly what we have there. Notice the notation using the primes just to make things easier without writing those second and first derivatives. So let's see what we can do to the Schrodinger equation as a result of that. Okay, so we know, for example, if I use my green borrow, that we had the following. Okay, so we'll say. We'll say if I write it this way, I'm going to do this pretty quickly. Minus h bar squared over 2m, this is going to be capital Psi double prime. Oh, it's not. It's going to be capital Psi xx plus v of x times capital Psi uh, is equal to i times h bar, and this is going to be capital Psi sub t. All right, I hope you understand these notations at this stage. The next thing I'm going to do is just sub in the fact that we're using a separation of variables. So we're going to have um, negative h bar squared over 2m plug in what we got there for that and for size of x x we had small psi double prime phi and we had v of x times phi times psi we have i times h bar and the first derivative with respect to t was uh, psi <laughs> phi prime like that all right so let's just plug in the values which we just got there the derivatives we just got there a moment ago the whole point of separation of variables is you do exactly that. You separate out the variables. So in this case, we have functions of t and we have functions of x. Actually, I actually have to get rid of this x because we don't need this anymore. So let's do this. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to have all the functions of x. So it's going to be negative h bar squared over 2m psi double prime uh, divided by psi plus v is equal to i times h bar times phi prime over phi. Now, if you think about this, you're having two functions which are both varying. This varies, and so does this. And the only way these can be equal for all time is if they're actually equal to a constant, which I'm going to call k. 
all right now if you don't believe that just think about it and if you still don't believe it well then you're just going to have to believe it because it is it is the truth and that makes life a lot easier because we can now separate this out even more so as a result we're going to get the following uh, first of all if you look here if I pull out 1 over psi on the left hand side we're going to get 1 over psi uh, 1 over psi times uh, negative h bar squared over 2m times, uh, or excuse me, plus psi times v. Is that right? There should be a psi double prime there somewhere as well, isn't that right? One second, I pull out 1 over psi. Yeah, there's a psi double prime there. Alright. I think now, am I missing something here? No, I pulled out psi this there. Alright. So we realise that this is actually an equivalent thing as as, as as saying it's the it's actually the Hamiltonian. If you look at this, this is actually the Hamiltonian. All right. So uh, the, that this is an equivalent thing of writing it. Uh, so we have h times psi over psi. Okay. This is the Hamiltonian times psi divided by psi, which of course uh, is equal to now on the on the other side k. Now the reason we can't cancel our, uh, the the size here is because this is an operator acting on psi. It's a Hamiltonian operator, so you can't just cancel the size. So we get h psi is equal to a constant times psi like that. And hold up a second, you might say, I realize what this is, that's h psi, and we know that constant happens to be the energy. That's the first thing. Alright, and that's some, that's some pretty good work out of us there. Next, if we look at the other side, we had i times h bar phi prime over phi equals to a constant. So what we get as a result of that is i times h bar phi prime is equal to k times phi. All right, and of course we know what this constant is equal to now, so it's equal to the energy of the system. All right, and what we have here are two things now. First of all, this here is the time-independent Schrodinger equation. The Hamiltonian on psi is equal to energy times psi, and we have the we'll say the time or the temporal component of that uh, of that part. Now the next thing and the last thing I'm going to do is show you how to solve these two differential equations. And they're very straightforward. They're both one is of second order and one is of first order. And I'm going to do this very quickly. So in the case that we had i times h bar and we had del psi or del excuse me del phi del t is equal to the energy times phi. So what I'm going to do is a separation of variables on this. Why? Well to be honest it's just the way this, these, these particular equations work. So once I separate them out, I can do a bit of integration. So this is something you should have seen before. I put all the phi's on the left, and I put everything else on the right. All right. So let's do a small bit of integration on that. We're going to find the natural log of phi. Okay. Uh, we'll say natural log of phi, and it's going to be evaluated at zero and evaluated at infinity is equal to negative i times e times t over h bar. Alright, so of course we take exponentials on both sides, and the exponential and the, lo and the natural logarithm are inverse functions. Alright, so they cancel each other out, and what we're left with is we have phi, and we have, um, we have the following, we have phi minus, we have phi, excuse me, over, we have phi over, phi at t is equal to zero, is equal to e to the negative i e t over h bar and finally we get phi at t is equal to phi at t is equal to zero times the exponential done alright that's very straightforward and next I'm just going to do the, the second the, the second differential equation which in this case was the time independent Schrodinger equation alright here so what we had is we had negative h bar squared over 2m times psi uh, well I'll write it properly I suppose del 2 psi del x squared plus v times psi is equal to the energy times psi this is a second order differential equation with constant coefficients because we're, we're assuming of course that we're in a constant potential and of course these are these are constants here so let's just rearrange this a small bit if you don't know how to do this or if you don't know why I'm doing this then look at my videos on differential equations where I did in-depth solutions to uh, second-order differential equations with constant coefficients. All right. So that's just rearranging and doing a small bit of factorization. All right. So once again, I'm going to 
I'm going to separate this out alright this is this is stand this is a standard procedure and like I said look at my videos on differential equations if you don't know how to do this next thing we need to do is solve this and actually I'll rewrite it so we're gonna have psi double prime plus 2m over h bar squared and times e minus v times psi and this is my second order differential equation with constant coefficients which I'm going to solve and in order to do this you need to solve the the characteristic equation so the characteristic equation is going to be equal to lambda squared plus 2m over h bar squared times lambda oh, no, excuse me, times e minus v is equal to zero so we need to solve that equation and the best way, of course, to solve that is use the formula negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared over 4ac minus 2a. So I'm going to be very pedantic here and show you what that means, what that is. So it's going to be zero, uh, negative 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 minus 4 times 1 times 2m times e minus v. All rooted, all divided by 2. And there's, excuse me, there's a, there's a h bar squared there somewhere. All right, that's, that's going back into secondary school. Now, of course, we're going to find that this is, an, this is a negative term. We can't get a square root of a negative number. So we take out iota and just switch it around. So it's just going to become 4 times 2m e minus v over h bar squared, like that. And all that is over 2. All right. And I'm just going to wipe my board here. And just, I'm, going to, um, I'm just going to simplify this, this expression here very quickly now. Okay, we're very close to the end. So let's just simplify that expression. We had plus or minus iota times the square root of 8m uh, times e minus v over, uh, what did I have? 4h bar squared. No, I didn't have it over h bar squared. Okay, because I took the 2 underneath the line into my square root. All right, now the general solution for these equations is the following. So psi is going to be an exponential to the reals times a cosine times the imaginary plus a sine times the imaginary. Why is that? The, why is that? Well, then ask a mathematician. But basically, the real solutions to this go to the powers of an exponential. The imaginary solutions go into so cosine and sine. Notice, of course, that the real solution is equal to 0. So e to the naught, of course, is 1. And then the imaginary solutions is going to be the square root here. So let's plug that straight in. And we're going to find that psi... What I want to do is actually make a substitution. I'm going to say that alpha squared is equal to 2m e minus v over h bar squared. And that just makes life easier because, of course, my square root now just becomes square root alpha squared, which is alpha. So plugging all that in, I'm going to get uh, that psi is equal to e to the naught, which is equal to 1, times a cos alpha x plus b sine alpha x. Why do we use these constants a and b? Well, that is just to make the, the equation more general. Do a course in differential equations to find out exactly why you do that. And that's the solution to your that's the solution to your time independent Schrodinger equation. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.